Hi, everyone. Um, as you said, my name is Brian Sayers, and I work out of the San Francisco office for Homespire. And today, I uh, will be presenting a building case study involving the understanding the dependence on certain evacuation modeling techniques on the variety of input parameters. Um, <clears throat> practitioners of performance-based design often rely on evacuation modeling to determine our set values. And currently, there's a variety of tools available to assess evacuation. Some of these tools are discussed in the fourth edition of the SFB handbook with a chapter involving computer evacuation models for buildings. Inside the chapter, it discusses selecting models appropriate for project uses, um, also discusses configuring model scenarios, and provides a review on current software based on certain model characteristics. An important report from NIST came out where it uh, provides guidance to computer evacuation model users. Um, the guide evaluates um, variance and uncertainty in different model parameters for steps in X89 evacuation software. And another important part of the report is a literature review for different input values. So today, I will be using a building to analyze hand calculation, a movement optimization model, and a partial behavioral model um, to see their effect for base case scenarios and a further assessment for uh, variability and other parameters. And here you see the building used. Um, it is mainly a crowd situation with two stories. The lower level here has the main area um, with exits spaced around the perimeter, some directly to the outside while others use this corridor area. Um, and the upper floor occupants you see here are less dense. We used a less concentrated assembly use for the lower floor and a business use for the upper floor with occupant loads per NFPA 101 life safety code. And you can understand the geometry a bit better here where the upper floor occupants can either use a stairway to exit directly to the outside or down through the middle into the assembly area and use the exits from there. Uh, you see the upper floor occupants are less dense. However, they typically have longer travel distances um, and more narrow egress components. So hand calculations were conducted per the SFPE handbook, where hydraulic movement goes through egress components um, based on empirical results, where the occupants move as a group and flow is generally optimized, where occupant behavior is not explicitly considered. You see the exits are group A, B, C, and D. Um, this is due to the similar occupant use and similar uh, occupant pathways. And also provides um, simplification for the calculations and for the results. Um, for this scenario, uh, it was dominated by restricted, restrictive elements. Um, for example, there was consecutive loading where room 102 was able to reach exit C before the occupants from room 101 were able to traverse through the exits. Um, EvacNet 4 was used as a movement optimization model, which optimizes travel and flow for quickest evacuation times. EvacNet flow uses a coarse grid to represent the building uh, with nodes and arcs. Nodes are building elements such as hallways, stairways, rooms, and these elements are given an initial occupant load and a maximum capacity. While the nodes are connected to each other through arcs um, with a specified travel time and movement flow, for, the, for these cases, uh, the arcs were calculated with SFPE equations. Um, however, the travel times cannot be varied, the velocity cannot be varied due to occupant density changes during the simulation. VACnet is able to incorporate the, a network of the building and is able to analyze the flow for the building elements for each time step, which was too complex for the hand calculations. Partial behavioral simulations implicitly account for some behavior aspects. For our scenarios, we use Pathfinder version 2009. Um, unlike the other methods, individuals were able to progress through a coordinate-based system. And as there were agents used, there are different occupant characteristics that could be assigned a constant or distributed parameters. The distributions could be either normal or uniform. 
uh, Pathfinder has two modes, either SFPE mode or steering mode. SFPE mode calculates the movement based on the SFPE handbook, while steering mode uses interperson distance and wall locations to modify the movement. Other important aspects is that SFPE mode by default allows occupants to occupy the same space, while in steering mode they avoid collisions. Another important aspect between these two is the fact that SFPE mode restricts door flow limitations, while this is not seen in steering mode. And a benefit from using the, this software is you're able to visualize the 3D geometry and see the occupant pathways as they progress through the evacuation. Um, and unlike the other softwares, or unlike the other models that we used, this one had occupants that proceeded to the closest final exit. So they didn't need to all have the same final evacuation time as they were in a vac net. So each method used a base case scenario um, with the design occupant load seen here. Movement calculations were conducted per SFPE while an additional assessment of Pathfinder and steering mode was also used. No pre-movement was included for the base case as pre Pathfinder was the only one that could incorporate a distribution. And for Pathfinder, a shoulder width of 46 centimeters was used, consistent with Predachensky and Malinsky design values for adults. So here you see the scenarios that were run. The base case used each method, while occupant and density were varied for EvacNet and Pathfinder at constant values. Um, Pathfinder also allowed for the addition of shoulder width and the addition of distributions, where pre-movement distributions were looked at individually. And then finally, scenarios were, want, were run with pre-movement, shoulder width, and velocity all distributed. When occupant density was varied, other characteristics were held constant, while the density was varied from 25 to 175% of the base case value. And here you see the least dense uh, situation, the design base case scenario, and the most dense situation, which we tried to compare to life safety code uh, values similar to a library reading room up through a casino or a more concentrated assembly use. Unimpeded walking velocities were varied from 50 to 175% of their initial value from the SFPE design of 1.19 meters per second. Um, while these were held at constant values for each simulation, we compared this to the NIST report literature review, which had a standard deviation typically of 0.25 meters per second. Therefore, most of the scenarios were run within two standard deviations. Shoulder width was varied in the same way, from 50 to 175 percent of the design value, leading to a range comparable for Predachensky and Malinsky design values of children through adults carrying a light package. And when, pre, when distributions were included, um, pre-movement was applied in normal distribution with standard deviations from 5 to 25 seconds in increments of 5 seconds. This range was used as it was able to show results that were either Q-driven or pre-movement driven. Um, finally, when all three occupant characteristics were applied with normal distributions, um, they were given a shoulder width distribution to incorporate a range similar to Predachensky and Malinsky design values a velocity um, seen in the NIST report, and pre-movement with a 10-second standard deviation. Here you see the exit distribution for the different methods. What it can be noted is exit A, which is the assembly area that leads directly to the outside, has a higher use for Pathfinder. This is due to the fact that occupants use the closest exit, therefore they are least willing to, less willing to use the corridor areas. Um, it's also noted that a VACnet distributes the occupants to optimize evacuation time. Therefore, these values are actually changed for different model scenarios. For example, um, exit A varies from 44 to 53% during the different models, while Pathfinder continues the same occupant usage. Here you see the final base case evacuation times for the building case study, where they are generally around the same number, except for Pathfinder and steering mode, which uses different movement models, and also um, no restriction on door flow. One benefit, um, one aspect is Pathfinder is generally optimized for this uh, base case scenario. Occupants begin moving and proceed directly to the final exit with no delay. Um, 
they also are benefited from the individuals being dispersed throughout the simulation, while the other methods use a median travel distance to the final evacuation. This allows for some occupants to be dispersed close to the final exit. Here you see a comparison for the different occupant densities. Um, these are compared to the base case time, where you see that 100% uh, there is a zero second difference. Um, it, these numbers for Pathfinder are generally uh, within five seconds of each other. However, they appear to have a less of a difference for Pathfinder in steering mode because of the low base case results. Pathfinder at a high density is seen to have more of an impact, um, which could be the result of the door flow limitations. While Evacnet also has door flow limitations, it could be less impacted because of the occupant redistribution. With velocity, you see differences with higher velocities as SFPE mode levels out with the crowd situation as there are door flow limitations while steering continues to have an impact from velocity. Evacnet has median travel distances to the final exit and also allows occupants to redistribute. Now, for Pathfinder in steering mode, this is a comparison. While these were all run individually, individually, they're compared against each other, and it is seen that they continually have an impact on the final evacuation time in steering mode. However, in SFPE mode, this is not seen to be the case, where velocity was already described previously, and shoulder width doesn't have much of an impact because of the fact that occupants are able to occupy the same space. Continuing on to distributions, what you see here are different occupant load groups, and they're compared to the same occupant load when no pre-movement distribution is applied. And as expected, at low occupant density, they're di driven by high pre-movement times. However, as density increases, the, uh, there's a benefit from the pre-movement distribution as occupants are able to begin to move to exits earlier and begin queuing. The same effect is seen with Pathfinder in steering mode for the lower densities. However, you see for upper densities, there is little or no impact from pre-movement distributions. And this is the fact that still individuals are being blocked, acting as obstacles for the moving individuals, um, which you see in this video here. Um, Spearpoint found this to occur in the Simulex evacuation model when occupant densities were above one person per meter squared and there were high pre-movement variations. He also noted that these are relatively unrealistic for real evacuation scenarios as occupants would navigate around the still individuals or the still individuals will begin moving as others around them begin moving. So you see this is especially impacted by the occupants very close to the exit. We'll keep going. So this is the occupants remaining in the simulation with the different pre-movement distributions for a Pathfinder in SFPE mode based on the design occupant load. Um, this is given a nominal 60 second pre-movement time. And as expected, the exit flow begins earlier as the standard deviation increases. And around 20 second standard deviation is when the final occupant is able to really reach the exit around when the queue is dissipated, therefore adding to the standard deviation, making it 25 seconds, ends up increasing the evacuation time. Here you see the occupants remaining with Pathfinder versus SFPE mode, where in steering mode you see the, the difference in the base case results as the slope is, is uh, greater, meaning that the exit flow is also greater for steering mode. While the intermediate queuing is seen with the bright red line, where it takes longer to approach the slope However, at the end, these both converge with the standard deviation um, because of the high pre-movement times. So finally, the last scenarios were run with all of the distributions. And in steering mode, it was seen to have an increase of 17 seconds when compared to the base case results. And this was driven by the velocity distribution as with collisions, slower occupants were able to impede the flow. Um, pre-movement ended up having negligible effects because of intermediate queuing and shoulder width. Um, the bigger and smaller occupants were really able to cancel each other out. In SFPE mode, there was seen to be a decrease by five seconds when compared to the base case scenario, 
and this was driven by the pre-movement distribution, as it was seen that shoulder width had no impact, and that the velocity distribution actually ended up adding time to the final result. So, in conclusion, for this uh, building case study, the exit decisions were seen of shortest versus quickest, along with the treatment of the models as either individuals or groups. Also, the impact of pre-movement distributions was seen, while carefully considering intermediate queuing. One of the main differences for Pathfinder and steering mode was the flow control of the doorways. And finally, the velocity distribution for this case study was seen to increase the final evacuation times. Um, it is noted that since this study, there was Pathfinder version 2011 that has been released, which has changes to the way that occupants choose their path, and also makes quite major modifications to the use of intermediate queuing. But this study really reiterates the fact of sensitivity analysis for occupant users to understand the embedded assumptions of the model, the default settings, and understanding the input parameters available to them. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. We have time for a couple questions. I have a question about the input for EvacNet, because yes. it's, it's a difficult one. It looks like you have an open space on the ground floor. So can yeah. you talk about how you, because I've looked at, yeah. I've used EvacNet for like yeah. the World Trade Center, for instance, where there's yeah. an open floor plan. You really have to kind of be careful about how you structure the nodes and arcs in an open floor plan. Yeah, because of the, the large space and the stairway coming down into it, there had to be um, nodes for the landings. We broke up the space into several different nodes for the open area um, because one node can't really account for, uh, I think it was like 1,700 meters squared. So we did have to break it up into many different, different um, nodes. Squared. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much, Brian. Thanks. Appreciate it.